All right, we're back. Now for fun stuff. Got these two boxes right here. So we got blown up panhead case, worn out evil drag cylinders, and then we got small bore airplane mode, I think. Ooh, we even got a card. Do we advertise for these guys? Ooh. That's the kind of airplane that this motor's made for. Ooh, look at that little dinky thing. Isn't that special? That is good packaging. Look at that. This is this is a baby cylinder. Attacking me. Look at that little sucker. That's a small little thing. Look at that. We got little head. Little baby head here. Look how small that is. Look at the size cylinder on top of that sucker. And this bore looks like it's usable too. You can actually run this one. All right, how big is that thing? <clears throat> so it's supposed to be around 4.3 inches, I think, or 4.430. Damn it, I just where I can get it up. Let's see what it actually is. These are not aircraft certifiable parts here. 439. So that's a little bit bigger than 7 16 it's about five over maybe so four and 7 16 bore that's just about right i think so these are big bore harley 3.890 we'll put the whole damn thing inside there look at that that's a little bit bigger bore, see? That whole thing just goes in. Look at the difference. Big sucker. <clears throat> so my theory is I can take an airplane cylinder and head, put them together, and make a big motor for a Harley. Boom. So this is steel with aluminum, no head bolts. It's a small bore motor. That over there is his big brother. Can you see the difference? There's your difference. So this is five and a quarter inch bore. This is four and seven sixteenths bore. So what gets me is the size of the head is so much smaller. And the valves are this is like Harley valves in here. They got big valves over here. But it's the same design, see? They look identical how they're made. You can tell it's the same manufacturer. So these are a continental. <laughs> So this is a 360 six banger motor, 360 cube inch. This is the turbo motor. So you got one port on each side. So you got the exhaust port coming out this side. Hey, look at that exhaust port. Nice shaped port. It'll flow real nice. So this will come right out the right side of your motor like you're supposed to. And this is the left side, which is your primary side. And this is the, you got dual carbs sticking out this side. And Pretty nice straight in port. I'd like it better if it went in this direction, but for coming in an angle, it's not uh, too bad of a port. It's got a nice short side radius, so it's fairly high. <clears throat> it is a lot bigger than this one. A lot smaller than this one over here, though. So. 
So you got big port, small port. Big head, small head. There you go. The height different too. There you go. I like that. So look at the cooling fins on these things. Lots of thinning. So even though you can make a lot of horsepower, it's cool. So this is a 360 motor. This over here is either a 520 or a 550. Or is it 540? I forget. So that'd be 520 cubic inches or 550 cubic inches. Different with stroke. They had a 4 inch stroke and they had a 3 and a... I thought they were 3 and a 7 eighth stroke. <clears throat> Something like that. So this has a little small two bolt exhaust. This has a four bolt anti gasket. Looks like they both run 18 millimeter spark plugs, which is way bigger than it needs to be. Now this one's a little short reach plug, so you can actually put a Harley plug in that and run it. This one here had a real deep three quarter inch plug in it. This one's got a little small, so I can run actually a Harley spark plug in this. That'd be like a knucklehead plug or a flathead plug. And of course, it's two of them. So, and they're both short reach, so that makes it real easy for spark plugs. They have the same rocker design. Obviously, different size rocker arms, though. So, you know, they're just the same thing, just bigger. Four bolt flange, four bolt flange. The way I figured, you use two, you use four bolts and cut the other two off. And it would look just like this. You know? That bolt pad is not that much wider. Yeah, it's pretty close. So Altima's Evo 140 motor has a 4.4 bore, which is only slightly smaller than this 4. 439 bore or 437. So it's only a 30 second bigger bore. So I can take a set of Ultima Harley cases and probably modify it and put that on it and be different. And if I really want to be different, I could put this one on there. I like this one. This is more my size. I like this one, but now this one's going to have a little bit problem with cases. It's not quite big enough. That'd be a lot bigger case. You need to cut those two off there. It's uh. The bolt pad is not quite big enough. See the bolt pad is on the edge of the cylinder here. It's a little off. So yeah, I like this one, but it's not gonna work for me right this minute. These I think will work out pretty nicely. These have a nice narrow hemi angle. So it's a hemi chamber. So it's basically like a Gen 3 car hemi motor, except it might be even a little bit flatter than what those are. It's dual plug, just like they are. And so this is basically a, a good old, well-designed hemi motor. Instead of running 8 to 1 compression, maybe we'll put this up to like 10 to 1 or better. A little more squeeze out of it. <clears throat> Flanges are a little on the thin side. Now, what I'm not sure about is the length of the cylinder. How much stroke can we stuff into this pig? So, these are made for big, long strokes. So, that looks like we are almost six inches overall length. I mean, uh, this is six inches here, so that'd be seven inches. Okay, this one here, it's only like six and a half inches. So, this is going to be a short... So you can probably put like a four and a half inch stroke in this maybe. Definitely should be able to run an 80 inch crank in there. That'll put you about 130 cubic inch motor. This one here. Yeah, we're almost the same as the Harley, so a little bit shorter, but we're about three quarters of an inch. So this one you can put a little bit more stroke in it. So I can probably get up to a, Four and five eighth stroke in that, maybe a four and three quarter. So if you did a four and five eighth stroke with a that size bore, you're probably close to 200 cubic inches. 
So this one here, it's probably going to be more, if you had an 80 inch crank in it, it'd be 132 cubic inch motor. So that wouldn't be too bad of a little putt putt around town motor. And if we can stuff a longer stroke in there, we can get up to 145 inches or so, just like a 140 motor would be. Remember, this is a little bit bigger bore, so slightly bigger. So let's dig out the other one here and see what it looks like. Important tools out of the way. Ah. Definitely got good packing here. Ooh, another card. Ooh, it looks like the last one. <clears throat> get smarter on how I take it out. Yeah, this effort. Look how much less effort that was. See, I get smarter too with age. Okay. So, it looks like these have the same basic valve train, both of these. And this one's bigger. Okay, these were 7 16 stems. These look like they're 3 A's. Yep. Yeah, we use a Harley size valves, 3 A stems. There you go. I don't know what all these numbers mean on here, but they mean something to somebody, I guess. <clears throat> Not to me. Just like these ones here have numbers, too. There's one down there. Okay. I'm not using that one right now. So, if we take this one. Let's see any more hands here. Looks like about 45 degree V angle. That yeah, looks like about a 45 degree angle, doesn't it? Pretty close. We got bolts right on. Off. We got them off by a few degrees. So it actually goes over here. So that'd be a nice looking pan in motor, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. These dimensions are the same from 36 to 99, so <clears throat> don't fool yourself on being a newer bike, being different. They're all the same. Only twin cams and inmates are different. The real Harley is the same no matter what year it is. So we can make a motorcycle look like that. Nice little Harley motor, huh? These don't look too small when you put them on this motor, but you put that big one next to it, that's going to be a totally different deal. So, so it's just a matter if your rod's going to be long enough to get from there to there. Let's see, where is my tape measure at? So, if we run an 8 inch connecting rod and you have a four and a quarter stroke, that would be what? 
4 and 8 is 12. That ain't the right number I'm looking for, though. The, um, I'm trying to forget the overall height of the motor. So the uh, you come up 8 inches, that'll be your rod length. That's a given. So that puts me basically up to the bottom of the pin right here. Okay, so that's your wrist pin. And then if you have a 4-inch stroke, you can come up 2 more inches. So... And I'm not sure how far up inside that motor the piston's going. Obviously it can't go that high, so probably about to here. So if we're within three inches, we're probably close. So we got four inches maybe of usable height. Two and a quarter of that would be stroke. And you got another two and a quarter inches for the piston height overall. So we got enough room. We could probably make that work. I'm not sure how deep that is up in there, but deep enough. We have to raise the deck up height a little higher. <laughs> Just a little. Might have to add a little extra case in here. Maybe we use that thick spacer that we had within that box. Use that extra half inch one. Weld that to that case, and then boom! A generator airplane motor. 130 something cubes or if we go to a longer stroke, which we, I think we got room for some stroke, we can make it a little bigger. Go 145 cubes. There you go. The two exhausts coming off this side. Push rods come right down to our lifter block down here. Probably wind up trimming the flange off here. We don't need all that extra area. Or maybe I can make it work. I don't know. There you go. Something to think about. This takes little knuckle covers up here, so it kind of looks like a little knucklehead motor. It'd be pretty, pretty slick looking, I think. Definitely doable. Yeah, the one I really like is using that one over there. That's nice, but this over here is more my stuff. There, I like this one here. a little bit bigger. Now that would have to be extended over a little bit. <laughs> Probably be a little bit higher up. So we need a longer rod. The bigger the bore, the higher you got to make the cylinder go up to clear everything. And it looks like it's an offset piston of about a half inch. There you go, you make that work. There you go. So about that long. We got two of those up there. Look at that. Boy, that'll look dinky on that little small case down there, wouldn't it? And that looks a little excessively big on the bore, which is right up what I like. I only got one of those though. So we'll have to get some more of them. Alright, well there you go. This is a pretty user-friendly device, I think, but I do like this big one though. So the Pro Stock drag bikes are running five and an eighth inch bore because I got some cylinders for Pro Stock drag bike Harley based motors. I think they call them Buells. Now they call them Victories or something else, but whatever. So if they get a five and an eighth in there, I can do a five and a quarter. Fuck it, we can make it in there. But um, all right, well there you go. Mad scientist at work again. So I think that'll work pretty good. What's the other side of the motor going to look like? The other side of the motor looks like this. Yeah, it's hard to hold a square, but anyway. This is what the other side of the bike will look like. So you run two carbs, boom, boom. <clears throat> I'm sticking straight out the side. Leg issues would be a problem. So the other option is to 
weld this up and have the carb come out at an angle like this. You have one carb going forward that one, one going this way. Now this one would be up there by the front fork, which would be a clearance for a front fork issue. So you probably have to do some kind of a chopper frame where it went out further like that. Put that carb out there, put that there. Or you can do a 90 degree, which is kind of stupid doing 90s. 90 up off this coming this way. Double 90 is not good for airflow. Easy to make though. Or turbocharge it. There you go. I like that method. Put a fuel injector in there, squirt fuel in there, and put a nice elbow in there for a turbo. Run a big turbocharger down here in the front of the motor down in this area. Got the exhaust feeding from the other side. Come into there, go right in there, call it down. There you go. Nice turbocharged 140 something inch motor. That'll be good. Eh, maybe only 130. But, uh, all right, well, there you go. Big plans. We'll see how that goes. Tough to play with.